Okay, now let's talk about the stages of moderately ductile fracture. So it's fairly ductile. First, we, we apply that stress and then necking will begin. That has already begun to fail when it begins to neck. But then what we don't see all the time is there'll be these voids that happen. As it continues to neck, material keeps on getting pulled out and eventually it can't be replaced. Like the bonds just aren't able to rearrange themselves quickly enough and so little gaps are going to begin to form. Those gaps will coalesce. They're going to get into bigger gaps and they're going to connect together and make huge gaps. And then eventually the stress gets so concentrated right there at the edge that it suddenly cracks and fails. So necking, voids, the voids get bigger, a crack happens, and then it bring, finally fractures and fails. The cool thing is we can actually see where these voids happen. We can actually see where these voids happen. Like in this case, the voids happen around these little particles. You're wondering, well, what were those particles? Well, they weren't metal for one, that's the thing. And so the bonds weren't so strong around them. Um, now, they might have been a different type of metal. They could have been impurities. They could have been this dust that got stuck in there. Whatever they were, the bonds to those little particles were not as strong as the bonds to the metal itself. And so when the metal began getting stretched, it broke away easily from those particles and it left a gap. And if we look at this surface right here, we can see how it's a very pitted surface. It is not a perfect surface by any means. And all those pits are coming from all those voids which coalesce together until finally it fails. So that's it for this time, just talking about how ductile failure works and how it looks at a microscopic scale. Where is it coming from? So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. And next time we're going to jump into brittle failure.